Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this presentation where I will talk about the importance of emotions, and especially for entrepreneurs and leaders. I will have, however, not go into the difference between entrepreneurs and leaders. <laughs> we all know that emotions are omnipresent. I'm sure you can agree that they affect you in your daily activities. And yet, in the in an organizational setting, there are a lot of myths about <coughs> emotions. It's said that they are irrational and that they interfere with business and that they definitely not contribute to performance. And last but not least, they cannot be studied. <coughs> So, maybe they are not important. I will try to convince you that they are. And I could use my 10 years of research in doing so, and I will in a short while. But in addition, to make this more up-to-date, more relevant, two weeks ago I sent out a question to seven key entrepreneurs and leaders in Swedish the industry and public sector and ask the question, what role do emotions play in your leadership slash entrepreneurship? Uh, actually, I uh, asked nine, but eight answered. And I will use their answers. They have helped me to structure this lecture <coughs> in addition to my own results. So the first one to tell you that they are important is Jens Spenderp, who is the CEO for Spenderps. I suppose even foreign students know what that is. You drink it. <laughs> uh, and he says, it is the emotions that drive me or stop me. I cry awfully often, almost always from happiness. My passions are aroused. I cannot imagine a person or CEO that is not governed by emotions. In crisis, my emotions are at their strongest. I don't know from where I get my strength, but I know that much, that it's all about emotions. So let's start with, what are then emotions? There are different perspectives. The most common one is that emotions are short-term, evaluative, directed towards something or someone, like happiness, anger, surprise. They may also be long-term and build up the uh, uh, glue in all our social interaction when we meet and interact. And such long-term emotions can be uh, love, trust, loyalty, suspicion. And when we study emotions in the organizational context, it makes sense to view emotions as socially constructed because then we can both build in the long term and short term and we can also uh, build in the <coughs> cognitive aspect. And if we view emotions as socially constructed, then we believe that they are formed in our interactions with each other. When we work uh, in groups, for instance, when we work with students or students work with teachers, etc. And they evolve in this interaction and can take new forms. Depending on what is happening, emotions uh, can arise like joy or sadness or in the long run, uh, trust to each other. And they can also vary in intensity and be expressed, then we show them. Uh, or repressed, then we try to hide them. And emotions are then formed on both macro and micro levels. And emotions uh, are dependent on my own cultural background. If I come from Italy or Sweden, south of Sweden, north of Sweden, or, and my norms and values. It also depends on, in the organization, on the organizational structure, the organizational culture, 
and the history of the company, if it's an old or quite new company, and the emotion talk in the company, how we talk about emotions. So all this form the emotional climate in the organization. <coughs> so I will go through four different how and why do emotions matter. I will go through display of emotions, emotional energy, emotions in decision making and emotions in the family firm. Display of emotions. The definition of display of emotions is that they are observable changes in my face, in my voice, in my body and the activity level and it's accompanied by emotional states. Feeling happy, feeling sad, etc. And I have found that two entrepreneurs and leaders, confidence, satisfaction, frustration, bewilderment and worry makes a difference. This is because emotions are performative, <coughs> meaning that other people interpret my emotions. So what I display is very important because other people interpret what, if I am happy, if I am committed, etc. And therefore, from this, they can make the decision to do something or not do something to act entrepreneurially or not act entrepreneurially. And the willingness is higher <coughs> if the entrepreneur and the leader displays confidence and satisfaction and lower when the dis they display, display frustration, frustration, worry or bewilderment. This might be very intuitive, however, it's also shown in this study that confidence is a key emotion for entrepreneurs and leaders. Because if we combine uh, confidence with satisfaction or frustration, people around these people are more willing to act entrepreneurially. And if we display confidence in combination with worry or bewilderment, that diminishes this willingness. Maybe coming from the, the, the fact that if you are uh, deep inside very confident about your uh, entrepreneurial activity and show frustration, that means something positive. But if I know that you are confident with your ent entrepreneurial activity and at the same time are worried, then maybe something is wrong. But this means then that entrepreneurs and leaders can have an impact or have an impact on the employees' uh, moods and are very influential in how they act. And seeing Neil Arnegård Hansen, who is the CEO of Landships and former chairman of Confederation of Swedish Enterprise, she says that Entrepreneurship is about convincing people and make them see things they did not previously see. <coughs> How can you do that without showing the emotions that you feel in this creation of the new? It is the strength that you get from this that you need to transmit to others. It is the emotions that convince the people around to make decisions, to change direction. No computed calculations can do that. However, emotions need to be authentic. <coughs> so entrepreneurs and leaders can engage, engage in deep acting or service act, surface acting. Deep acting means that they display the emotions that they actually feel. And then it's easier for other people around to interpret the emotion. On the other hand, surface acting means that I show and display emotions that I don't feel, feel I might have a reason to hide something, so I don't show, try not <coughs> to show it. And this leads to people around me, or the leader or the entrepreneur, being confused and it's hard to read the leader. What does he or she really means now? And this is 
uh, why this is so. Because deep, <coughs> deep acting signals commitment. And it's more important that there is conformity between what you display and feel than if it is <coughs> negative emotions or positive emo emotions, or what we traditionally call positive and negative emotions. And surface acting signals low commitment and can therefore jeopardize the goal I have with my entrepreneurial activity. And surface acting is also known to, <coughs> if it goes on for a longer time, that it leads to, it to burnouts and stress. It also means that the entrepreneur, him or herself, and leader can choose shall I engage in deep acting or service acting? <coughs> it's a, a choice they can make. And it also means that if I am going to carry through a change process as a leader, if I don't believe in it in myself, then it might be hard <coughs> for me to display authentic emotions. So I need to be convinced myself. And not all leaders are that. They are assigned a project or something, and maybe they don't even believe in it. And deep acting then, if it, if it signals commitment, then it can also be, leadership can become a group effort, or entrepreneurship can also become a group effort. Carola Lemne is the CEO of Praktikertjänst and board member of Investor. And I wrote her because she is my relative, right? <laughs> and she says that my leadership is mainly based on my commitment. This commitment makes it possible to create enthusiasm. Commitment and enthusiasm are two emotions that can move mountains. <coughs> If we then move over to emotional energy, it's, kind, it's part of display of emotions. But here we view emotions when we interact in group uh, work in different projects with other people, or sit in board meetings, or management team meetings, or whatever. Emotions over time form the glue in the social interaction in those different processes. And in doing so, we can, as leaders or entrepreneurs, uh, show high or low emotional energy. If we show high emotional energy, we are kind of energetic. We signal that things are important. We may use our body language to do so or intonation, and that can also lead to that I am very influential in the process. People list, tend to listen to me. <coughs> I am kind of rendered power in the group. And I'm also a person that people want to, uh, to bring into the group work, because I'm committed and have high emotional energy. And then I am rendered status. I'm included. On the other hand, if I tend to uh, withdraw and not show and show low emotional energy, then the result may be that I give away power. I cannot influence. P people don't listen to me that much. And people don't even ask if I want to join the group. I may be excluded. <coughs> So high uh, emotional energy often is about trust, loyalty, confidence in each other and low emotional energy often leads to uh, <coughs> alienation, distrust, abandonment. And in the study that I made, I followed a boardroom 
meetings over time, you could see that emotional energy is a driving force, a very strong driving force, but it can also be a restraining force if you are not having this emotional energy, if you don't care about what is going on in the board. <coughs> and in this context, the leader or entrepreneur can be in the epicenter, depending on the emotional energy, or end up in the periphery. And what is more is that this emotional energy is contagious. So is, if I as a leader or entrepreneur is showing low emotional energy, people around me also tend to do that. On the other hand, if I am very energetic, show a lot of emotional energy, then they tend to be smitten. And over time, of course, as it, the, it did in this study in the boardroom, it, it was a very, uh, CEO with low emotional energy, who didn't even believe in his project, ended up with a less powerful and influential CEO. Uh, leader, sorry. And Don Sten Olsson, CEO of Stena Group, he answered the question with, without emotions, no energy. Energy is the most important part of good leadership. Emotions also tend to affect decision making. And in this study, we looked at experienced entrepreneurs, they were owner managers, and how they are affected <coughs> by emotions when they decide to continue or discontinue to invest. And to invest in projects that have been underperforming <coughs> and they operate under high uncertainty or low uncertainty and they operate under uncertainty, that was the, the basic uh, condition. And here we found also pretty much intuitively that self-confident, challenged and hopeful entrepreneurs <coughs> are more prone to invest under high uncertainty than low. Strain didn't lead to any uh, propensity to invest under high uncertainty. So these entrepreneurs, owner managers, were aware when they were strained that they should not invest more. And embarrassment made them withdraw from continued investments. And this was more so under low uncertainty than <coughs> under high uncertainty. Meaning that this result contradicts uh, results from studying managers in big companies where they are employed, where they tend to invest and invest more to avoid to be embarrassed. But our owner managers here and entrepreneurs, they wisely withdraw and when they felt that this might go wrong and they didn't care if anyone else thought that it was embarrassing. Annika Falkengren, CEO of the Swedish bank, Esse Banken, answered the question by saying, the saying is that human beings are rational. We think <coughs> that our decisions are rational based on hard facts. Sure, we need them. However, my experience is that good decisions are made when you are aware of the facts, but you will need your emotional instinct to come deep into it. A good leader can never disregard values, attitudes and emotions. Emotions in the family firm. Do they matter there? Yes, most definitely. Emotions in the family firm 
are a crucial leadership component. The family business owner identifies a lot with his or her business. It becomes part of themselves. And this leads to a very strong emotional bonding and to a special ownership logic that is a bit different from the shareholder value logic, saying that they are interested in long-term orientation, an industrial focus, continuity in power and strategic direction, that means that they stay on long, they don't quit when there is a crisis, they have multiple ownership goals, not only uh, profit, it could also be to keep jobs at the local community for people there, they, so they don't move abroad to China or Estonia or something. And they have a vision to keep the business in the family over generations. So this would be the positive side of it and leading to a lot of, of joy and pride for family business owners. However, the emotional bonding can also lead to emotional messiness meaning that they are feeling mixed emotions about the, the firm. Maybe they are in the fifth generation and, and uh, feel more obliged to take over the firm than wanting to do it. And in the family firm, <coughs> you could argue, I will do that now, <laughs> that the emotional climate might be more important than, uh, than the entrepreneur's spirit to survive over generations. <coughs> and two family business owners helped me with a question and said, Bill Spendrup, he is the brother of the first one we saw here. They run the Spendrups together. The family business owner's feelings for the business idea, the family and the firm govern the whole business. The emotions are often all embracing, more so than recent. Maybe we should have sold off a long time ago, but I didn't feel like it. The analysis says that Jens and I should have sold the brewery back when we saved the company in 1980. However, the feelings for the tradition, the heritage and the pride made us go in another direction. And Per Enström, who is the ice cream master, and CEO of Sia Glass. Here you see the emotional bonding to the firm. He, he said, I don't have to call him CEO. It was enough with ice cream master. <laughs> and he says that, of course, emotions play a role for how you act. The relationships are a bit different when you deal with re relatives who are born into the firm. Blood is thicker than water. <coughs> So, I will let the last word go to Amelia Adamo, who is the owner and publisher and editor of M Magazine, and she was the founder of a famous Swedish magazine called Amelia. And she said, uh, what role do emotions play in your entrepreneurship and leadership? And she says, much, sometimes too much. However, without calibrating with my emotions, I would be a less good leader and entrepreneur. With her words, I hope that you realize that emotions holds a lot of promise for a future research agenda. And especially, I think it's important that we go down on the micro level to find out their importance. So, this was my presentation. Hope you enjoyed it. Okay, pretty good. First and then you. <laughs> I think what would be interesting to 
to what uh, literature called cognitive emotions. Okay. Yeah, the first uh, definition with uh, eff effective, uh, short term, etc. This is not <coughs> cognitive emotions, but the more long term emotions are defined as. And I, I completely agree with the fact that emotions uh, influence greatly entrepreneurs and the way they create and their desire and confidence. But my question would be that at the beginning of, the, of your presentation, uh, um, you presented that you analyzed seven different uh, already successful entrepreneurs uh, for such examples as, as you've given. But my question would be would it be of any use or viewed differently if emotions will be analyzed in rising entrepreneurs before winning the jackpot. Mm. Like, they're not viewed successful and they're mm. just starting. Mm. Do you think it would be mm. interesting? To yes, uh, there are studies that do that. I was a little bit egocentric today and took my own research. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there are, you know, about passion in entrepreneurship, the role of passion and... Uh, and uh, who is the uh, author now? Uh, a woman. Melissa Cardin, yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. So there are studies that do that. And in this study, I, I asked also employees <coughs> uh, how they interpreted their uh, entrepreneur's uh, display of emotions and how they affected them. Are they different, argue differently as successful entrepreneurs and, and uh, becoming entrepreneurs? Emotions? No, a I, I, lot of that is about emotional energy, believing in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And that could be regardless if you are on your own in the startup phase. Then you have to convince maybe bankers or customers and they see your commitment and emotional energy and all that and confidence. So, no, not. Maybe not really. It was Charlie first. Yeah. <laughs> first of all, uh, congratulations for the lecture. Uh, yesterday, we had a lecture by one of our honorary doctors, mm. Dennis Miller, and he showed results from this research, showing consistently <coughs> that listed companies in Europe overinvest. That means they destroy money. They invest more than create, increase the value of a company. Would you say that this has to do with emotions? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, if I do a parallel to my husband, yes. <laughs> Yeah, I think you have a lot of uh, psychological explanations there, yeah. I'm sure. Mm? You have given an example of uh, some successful people, mm. successful entrepreneurs, but there are some people who are not successful. They mm. were try trying to be entrepreneurs, but they are not successful. Mm. So. Um, uh, so successful, do you mean successful or? They, they are not successful. Mm -hmm. I mean, they failed. But maybe they had very really strong desire. They even had, uh, even was very positive. Mm -hmm. But they were not that much, uh, they were not successful. Mm -hmm. So, what is the, then what is the importance of emotion for them? Mm -hmm. And another thing is that, don't you think those successful people also sometimes misguided mm -hmm. due to the high emotion, high emotional feelings, sometimes mm -hmm. they are misguided? Mm -hmm. The first question I would say that, uh, I, I don't claim that emotion is the one thing that creates success or not success. But I think it is a helpful 
So if you take two entrepreneurs and one is is uh, more energetic, more emotional energy and confidence, it's likely that that person might be better off than the opposite. And then the second question was... I mean, sometimes those successful people are also misguided because of having emotion. Though they have the emotions, but sometimes they are misguided. Mm. Yes, uh, what I'm talking about here now is our, our normal... <coughs> healthy people. <laughs> I'm not uh, talking about uh, emotions <coughs> as dysfunctional. I mean... <laughs> I, I tend to think that... Um, yes, I have no comment thing. I could refer to my husband again. <laughs> I think, yes, that you can be aware of it. Sometimes, I can, I can go to myself, sometimes in meetings I tend to withdraw and think, well, I have no say anyway. But then I can click like this and say, sure you can. And then I feel that I have some energy in me and show my emotional attachment or commitment to that question. And at least I have made a try. So I think you can kind of be a little bit aware of that. Well, would you say that there, or that is a big difference between women and men <laughs> in leadership and emotions? And also uh, you refer to being authentic. Mm -hmm. And that if you show your emotions, you are more authentic. Well, I, I hesitate to answer that question because I haven't made any studies about it. So it would be guesses. And what is your guess? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I won't counter argue. <laughs> okay, Rolf. And then you have the last question, I suppose. Mm. Knowledge company is what uh, somebody produced as a, a notion a very years ago. Mm. Saying some people have good knowledge and so on, so that, therefore they, the company should be characterized as a knowledge company. Would it make any sense to say, talk about the emotion company? Uh, I'm sorry, we talk about emotional messy. <laughs> emotional mess. And we need to talk about knowledge mess as well. So there's mm. a sort of tire. Mm. <laughs> <coughs> yes, it does actually, because we have different types of organizations and I think some of them could be more like emotion organizations or whatever you call them. <coughs> yeah. And if, if all personnel are committed to something, to a, a cause that they firmly believe in, I think we could probably characterize that as an emotion organization. And you had the last question. Um, I, I, I've uh, listened to all your, all your lecture and you've mentioned that you've studied emotions in, 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 in the field of mm. entrepreneurship for almost 10 years. And uh, Sir right there, he, he sort of uh, pointed out about uh, some entrepreneurs who overinvest about GE and uh, um, thing, things like that. Uh, my question is, uh, do you think able to study you're basically studying what emotions are. Uh, have you ever tried to look uh, through a perspective where why these emotions are caused and can they be regulated? Being a teacher where mm -hmm. you stand there and, and tell people emotions mm -hmm. are important and mm -hmm. you know, you're trying to make that point. Mm -hmm. But do you think uh, being a teacher, would you, would you uh, recommend or would you try to teach can emotions be regulated? Mm -hmm. On a context based or on a culture based, or there is a huge amount of literature that talk about management of emotions, uh, not maybe so much in the organizational literature, but uh, and of course, there are you, we talk about emotional intelligence, which is about uh, kind of um, being 
empathetic to other people's emotions, to, to recognize other people's emotions and my own emotions as well, and be able to make something out of that for the good or for the bad.